You're tuned in to your new favorite podcast, Let's Be Clear, with me, Dr. Jamal Bryant, where we remove all of the blurred lines so there'll be no shades of gray, and you'll be able to understand everything in black and white. Every week, you're going to understand what is happening in the headlines, what's happening in your community, what's happening in our world, what's happening for your future. I'm excited to take this journey with you. I need you to do me a favor. I want you to be committed to listen and to see it every week. And I want you to share with all of your friends and uh, all of your family. Uh, today, I've got uh, somebody who I need to clear up some stuff with. You want to hear this conversation? I'm telling you, it ain't black or white. It's red. It's blood everywhere. Uh, when you hear the name Bishop William Murphy, he's my brother. He's my friend. And right now, he's Hester Prynne from the Scarlet Letter because he has been thrown out of everything. But I want to be clear that I love him no matter what he says today. He is still my friend. <laughs> Will you thank you for hanging out with me on the day? Let's, yeah, let's, you, let's, let's be clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> let's be clear. Yeah. I, at first, I started off the year saying, let our uncle that we don't really agree with yes. still come to Thanksgiving dinner. That that was that was Who the was first our uncle. I, I'm not no no names. Just no, that, we gotta be clear. <laughs> Who is the uncle? Let's be clear. So the first controversy yes. was, was around uh, Bishop Carlton Pearson. Yeah, and uh, and to be honest with you, this this this, this brother to brother, I yes. I was talking to my church. Uh, completely honest with you, all of my PR people said, don't bring up Carlton Pearson, don't bring up the dedication, yes. and don't bring up New Year's Eve. And I want to be clear, you brought up Carlton Pearson. I didn't bring him up. Well, I tried to jump well, over Well, since she was yes. talking, I so just for figured, those, I just, yes. it's been three weeks. It's so. been three weeks. So for those of you who don't go to church and have no idea who Carlton Pearson is, <laughs> Carlton Pearson uh, was a defrocked uh, by uh, uh, the African-American uh College of Bishops yeah. uh, for believing in inclusion uh, and saying that there was no hell for people to uh, go to. Uh, he died uh, very recently after a battle with cancer. Uh, Bishop Murphy was uh, one of the soloists at his uh, funeral. Both of us have this call to this generation, yeah. to this church. So uh, Bishop Pearson's daughter, Majesty, who has, uh, I think, um, one of the most cutting edge ministries. She's an up, up and coming soloist. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she just released some music out there. Majesty, you owe me. I just gave you a, a, a free plug. And uh, so we some kind of way we connected social media. She connected to my ministry. And uh, when Bishop passed away, I reached out to say, hey, love you, praying for you. If you need anything, blah, blah, blah. She asked it would really be an honor if you would come and minister at my dad's uh, celebration of life. Of right. course, D and I jumped on a plane, went to Tulsa, and um, uh, I was just really uh, moved by the lack of presence. And my, my you know, my, my, um, my conversation was around, we all have an uncle uh, who says stuff that's off the wall that we don't agree with, uh, but bet nobody else say nothing about it. Uh, and the, the, the heart of that conversation was that we're serving a generation who does not feel safe in church, that the way that the church has handled our beloved, the way that the church has handled our most valued assets after they have displayed some type of humanity is just unsafe to people who have never been exposed to church culture. So my, my conversation Dr. Bryant was around as a church, we've got to be intentional about creating safe space for people who have never heard the message of the gospel, which was Jesus's whole, that was his whole flow. Yeah. And of course, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious order of the day took issue with Jesus because he was always creating safe space for people who had never heard the message of the gospel. One of the things that you have ripped the Band-Aid off is the church's inability to just have conversation. Yes. Uh, and yes. The, the people will take uh, just one clip, one post. 90 one seconds. Segment, yes. I can say that is the full summary of what your theology is. Right. And what I really wanted you to talk about is how we can have compassion while disagreeing. It's the currency of the kingdom. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, Dr. Bryant, this is, 
This is so key. And I, I, honestly, you know, you and I, we have very transparent conversations. I'm excited about this podcast because it's going to be a safe space for people to have fully transparent conversations without the judgment. Yeah. That, uh, a lot of us are still working through our theology. Our, I'm, I'm uh, a few months away from graduating with the Masters of Divinity from awesome. Virginia Union uh, University from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology. And just the other night, we were talking about uh, what they call ATRs, African traditional religions. There are about 3,000 or more of them. And the thought of it is, the concept is that there is no separating what is secular and what is spiritual. Because everywhere I go, I take God with me. Everywhere I go, I take the gospel with me. So there is no separation between what is secular and what is uh, spiritual. How I've articulated it is we redeem everything, that we don't let the devil just take culture from us, and all we can ever do is a little church dance right. that uh, probably 75% of Gen Z's can't even relate to. They've never seen it. They, mama didn't grow up in church. Grandmama half went. And so we're now tasked to win a generation who doesn't know who C.L. Franklin is, uh, who doesn't know who Samuel DeWitt Proctor is. Right. We're, we're now ministering to a generation. Um, there arose another king who didn't know Joseph. Yes. So we, we've been here before. And so now I'm faced with what do I do with a same gender loving couple who now has a child who wants to dedicate that child back to God? Uh, is the child the sin? Is the, th this, is, this is what's not safe because, you know, I've, I've seen all kind of stuff. Well, now I believe in uh, same, I'm, the word is I married them. Yes. I, I didn't perform the, the wedding. I dedicated the baby. Right. I dedicate, let's, y'all say this with me. I dedicated a baby. Those, now, those are our daughters. We're walking with them. We love them. I know the scripture talks about how can two walk together except they agree. Right. But we can agree to disagree as well. The, 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 the nexus, Bishop, of the African traditional religions that you also see in Native American uh, religions yes. and South American uh, religions and West Indian is a little bit skewed from the premise you're raising it because they're dealing with the secular and the sacred in terms of the wind is sacred, the trees are sacred, right. the right. order is sacred. Right. Where you found yourself in the epicenter of the storm we is uh, walk it out. Yeah. So th they would say that's not the that's not the same thing. Yeah, that's not what they're in, saying. In separating that sacred and the secular. Right. So let's let's go back to Carlton Pearson. Okay. So Carlton Pearson, your call to the church was the absence of compassion, even while disagreeing. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That 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 the off uncle still get to come to Thanksgiving yes. dinner. He gonna bring macaroni and cheese. Yes. But nobody's gonna eat it. Yes. Th that's that that's that's what I'm talking about. This safe family dynamic yes. that I think we have abandoned because if I can't agree with you, then I can have no love or compassion right. or or even um uh, proximity yes. to you. And, and I think that was, uh, what got Jesus killed yeah. is that he was raising these issues of being around people that were not quote unquote religious or, uh, sanctified or whatever the language would have been back in that day that he was very intentional about being in spaces right. where proximity would create relationship. I, I think the church has been uh, extremely guilty of cleaning fish uh, before we catch the fish. As you are a recording artist, you are a pastor, an intercessor, yes. you are a father. Yes. What brings you at the center of the conversation is you are a bishop in the Lord's church. Yes. So he had, A defender of the faith. Yeah, the defender of the faith, or is what they call a prince of the church. A prince of the church. And being the prince of the church, what then is the message as a bishop, not as an overseer, as a pastor, as a district elder, as a bishop, 
Mm -hmm. to confront the culture, doctrine, theology of a black church prism that says we don't discuss LGBTQ. <laughs> uh, we, we don't. We do discuss it. We, yeah. we do. We do. What is the role of the, bi the bishop to mm -hmm. uh, swag serve? Mm -hmm. What is the role of the, the bishop of dedicating a, a baby from two same gender loving couples? Wow. Is that this is not a just a pastor? but somebody who gives oversight right. to the direction and to the theology of the church. Absolutely. So you are not Absolutely. citizen Joe. Right. Uh, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and even in this context, yes. I'm not Mr. Praise is what I do. Right. It, I'm an apologist. I'm a defender yes. of the faith. Yes. And my conviction about it, uh, Dr. Bryant, is uh, the conviction of Paul, that we have to be all things to all people, that uh, I can have fellowship with you and not believe what you believe. Yes. Uh, somebody asked me, uh, the, you know, people have like super courage uh, on social media. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody asked me, well, why are you trying to get, because of course people didn't like the fact that I said 150 people got saved. What's your problem? And what? so the clap back was, well, why are you getting them saved if you don't believe in hell? Well, I never said I didn't believe in hell. Right. I just said, let Uncle Carlton come to Thanksgiving dinner and don't eat the macaroni. Yes. Because you know it's off. <laughs> you know, and that, that that's no shade. That's no, but I think that there can be a difference of opinion. And yet you raise uh, the term, there can still be compassion and love because at the end of the day, the word on the street, and this is, of course, the clip that they didn't show, the word on the street is the church is not safe. And of course, in this dispensation where everybody has a therapist, uh, one of the one of the key uh, uh, concepts is you got to get somewhere safe. You got to find your safe space. I'm saying the church, because we've been so, um, I'm just going to say it, because we've been so bound by religion and what was like. I mean, think about this. There are churches that are still fighting over women wearing pants when the Bible clearly was talking about if, if there were no pants when the Bible was written. So if they want to hold to that scripture, we got to all put dresses on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's out of context. And I think as a bishop in the Lord's church, what I didn't understand, I'll be completely honest with you. What I didn't understand was the weight of my voice was the, the, the weight of, of our assignment in terms of leading the church forward. Uh, the church in a lot of ways has been um, re uh, a another Republican party that what they're saying to me, like the Republicans are saying stuff about Trump yes. in private. That's what a lot of pastors have, have done with me. They sent messages like, bro, do you, be you, you lead us, we watch it. Take, b break the walls down. Yeah, but I don't want the Nicodemus support that's gonna DM you. And let, let me let there. me go shout out yes. my homeboy, Pastor Dietrich Haddon came out, and of course they killed him too. He's oh, a, yes. he's a demon too. Oh, but yeah. at the end of the day, uh, the Dream Center Church of Atlanta is not Kappa Alpha Psi. It's not a fraternity. It's 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 supposed to grow. Right. We are supposed to draw people of all uh, uh uh, thoughts and yeah. culture and concept. It's it's not some members only club. The whole point of the church is to make disciples. And we we've had some folk question that. Well, 150 people didn't get saved. They just joined your church. Really, bro. Like that, like again, right. just further demonstrating that the church is just not safe. And all I'm saying is we've got to be safe to a generation that feels threatened by religion. And I'm not saying that we throw away our traditions. All right. My grandfather, we laughed about this. Uh, my grandfather, God uh, bless his soul. When D and I moved here 22 years ago, I preached that Sunday at my dad's church. D preached that Sunday at my granddad's church. Oh, wow. When she went into the pulpit to preach, she had to put on a doily. Wow. I mean, wow. you know, so I I come from, yes. I mean, deep Baptist roots, but my grandfather was also one of the first Baptist preachers to ordain and license female clergy. Wow. He was also one of the first Baptist preachers to lay hands and speak in tongues. He was also one of the first 
Baptist preachers to uh, have a Yamaha DX7. O only my only my <laughs> musicians know what I'm talking about here. I mean, that was the devil. Right. Think about this, Dr. Bryant. Five years ago, Facebook was the devil. Yeah. I mean, just the, the church has been so unsafe to a generation who really is seeking relationship with God, but the way that we have positioned it, it just doesn't make sense to them. And I'm saying we've got to be more intentional about fusing culture with the call of Christ. To, to be clear, knowing the weight now of your words. Yes. Uh, and your presence. Oh, my. That you are, we never put it in sacred space, but that you are a social media influencer. Yeah. Not about food or for tennis shoes. Oh, my of goodness. the direction of the church. If they don't know, now you know. Now you know. Oh, my goodness. A month later, would you swag surf again? A hundred and fifty people. That's not crazy. I know home. what happened. Would you do it again? Absolutely. Even with the cost of it? Absolutely. So you think that the, it, it balances itself out? I think that it forces the church to have a conversation. We've had the conversation. No, we have not. Yeah, we, you, have, you, have, you and I, the whole have Instagram had the has had the conversation. No, we people people are are throwing insults and they're fighting. I got it. Yeah. Uh, I had to get off TikTok the other day because my folks were fighting with folks who were throwing insults. Yes. And again, so this coming Sunday, third Sunday in January. Uh, D and I will celebrate 18 years we've been leading this church. 18 years. Tens of thousands of people have made a decision to walk with God. All of them didn't stay, but I, literally tens of thousands of people because of the ministry of the Dream Center Church of Atlanta have come into relationship with the Lord Jesus. Yeah. 18 years of successful ministry. And other Christians, and it wasn't all the church, but the church really led the attack. Right. Other Christians took a 90-second clip and drew a carnal conclusion for 18 years of ministry. And it, it, is the, it is the picture of the church that we have to talk about, that we have to address. So absolutely, I would do it again. Nah, I, you know, didn't like the insults, didn't like, but I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm anointed. I can deal with that. I can manage that. I believe the whole point of this, Dr. Bryant, was to move the church forward so that we can have a conversation that causes us to really address culture, church culture, uh, secular culture. Like, 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 what are we doing? Like, people really got offended because I was celebrating 150 people getting saved. Like, people were offended by that. And I they, don't think they were offended by 150 people getting saved. No, they were offended by it. So, no, no, so, no. Some of them were offended by it because they haven't had 150 people all year. And that's what they were offended by. Yes. They were offended by, Bishop, Yes, your, that that for you was the justification for the swag service. Oh, it absolutely was. No, no, but listen, you have, yeah, to, no, think, no, no. You have to think in context. Let's be clear. Let's that the average church is 50 people. Right. So you right. were saying because of the 150, it justifies the end. And I think that that's where it was thrown off because the overwhelming majority of people would not have seen 150. Right. Uh, and so for me, as your brother, I was burdened because in that snapshot, they got the swag surf. They walked it out, but nowhere in it did they get the message. Right. They didn't get Acts chapter three. Yes. Where uh, Peter and and uh, John said, "Stand up and walk." Right. Which is how we got to walk it. Yes. Out. And yes. they grabbed him by the right hand and they walked out with him, which is how we got to swag and surf. It was a profound. Oh, I went back and listened to the whole thing. Oh no, I, it, I needed to have. Oh yeah. So so you could. You, yes. So you could defend the faith yes but uh and again again it is it is what we have to address as a church yes because we're drawing conclusions about people's lives from one episode yeah and we don't know the story of people's lives and so people come into our context they come into our church and we judge people without 
really looking at the whole story. Like, and so I, I just think the conversation, number one, I do it again because I'm, I'm an evangelist. I'm like, I'm, I'm really about this whole soul winning thing. Like right. that's, that's my assignment. I'm, we going to get them. Yeah. Uh, we're, our church is expanding uh, to Buckhead. Uh, we, we'll be there this Sunday at eight o'clock. Our church is expanding. Uh, we're expanding to another side. We're going down 20. We're, our church is expanding. We, we don't have room uh, to put people. We got to find a bigger place to, to, to hold people. We're full at 10. We're full at 12. We got to find more space. Right. Why? It's not because I'm some witch. It's not because I'm some demon. Right. That, that, if you've been in my church for 10 minutes, you cannot deny Absolutely. that the glory of God lives there. And that, that's, that's, no, that's nothing. That's not because I'm such a good person. It's be, <laughs> and this this goes back to um, this is going to be the whole defense of my dissertation when I, I go for my doctorate that we've set this order of worship in proper biblical order. The outer court is where all of the stuff, the the interactions happen between worshiper to worshiper. All that's where you can walk it out. That's right. that's where you can swag surf in the outer court. All of that stuff happens in the place where there is the exchanges from worshiper to worshiper. Yeah. But then after that, then you get access to the inner court, which is the place where there's this exchange from worshiper to God. And after there's this exchange from worshiper to God, a lot of churches never get to the place where there's an exchange from the worshiper to God. And if we don't get from worshiper to God, we never get from God to worship. All right. So which is why, which is why we're so personality driven. It's what God has done in our church. You, you, you my homie, you, you know, all the, you know, where all the bodies buried. Yes. That, this ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> this, this is, this is God demonstrating to a generation that you don't have to be perfect to be used, that you don't have to have it all right, that you don't, you don't have to be error free to be used of God in a significant way. I don't know who's watching this, but just Grab a hold of that. That's for you because the enemy's trying to tell you because of your mistakes and because of what you're struggling with right now that you are not useful. He is a liar. I got a whole T-shirt. If the devil's talking to you, he's lying to you. Just wow. just hold on to that. And so these, all of these conversations, uh, even if you go back and you look at, we're 18 years old, so we're revisiting some of the, the foundations of how we got started and uh, some of the verbiage when we got started was to create a safe haven for people who want to be in relationship with God, but just don't really fit in the traditional model of the church. And so we've created safe space for people in, to infuse in, their in, life with their relationship with God. In creating this template for worship. Yes. Uh, that I think is absolutely brilliant from the outer court to inner court to holy of holy. It's Exodus 25. I didn't know where, where those separations are. Right. Right. Where then do you say is the separation? Because not the lay people giving pot shots on Instagram or right. TikTok. Right. Right. For the generals of the church, uh, for the fathers of the church. Absolutely. Where is the separation then, Bishop? between the secular and the sacred and giving that safe space, but knowing that they are not the same. Right. So how, how do I separate that I'm in the world, but I'm not of it? I think was the clash from the pulpit, not from the balcony. Right. So, and and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. The 29th of February uh, is the opening night of what I call demonstrate. And the Lord told me, demonstrate uh, that people are watching by Facebook, they're watching on YouTube, but they still don't get it, that you've got to create space for pastors to sit, to ask questions, for you to walk them through the revelation of the tabernacle. The out, it's Exodus 25. I didn't come up with it. It's right laid out there where he talks uh, to Abram and says, create a sanctuary where I may dwell. The, the the first issue is when we come in church, we talk about welcome into this place. He lives here. Yeah, this is his house. We should have to welcome God into His house. What are we doing that we have to invite God to come wow. home? Uh, wow, that that that's so. I'm wow. gonna be talking about that 
uh, February 28th and March 1st. I'm literally going to be sitting with pastors. Some pastor, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say, man. Come on. All right. I'm I'm going to I'm going to walk you through the revelation of how to create a one hour experience where people can encounter God in a real way and go back to their life and be better. That, 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 that's, that's all this is about. So I'm, I'm talking about the difference in the outer court that those exchanges where and this is what Doc, this is what God said to me. Church should not be China. It should not be some foreign country that we walk into where people have no idea what's going on. The miracle of Acts chapter two is not that everybody spoke in tongues. The miracle of Acts chapter two is that everybody heard the message of the gospel in their language. That, wow. That's the that's the miracle of Acts chapter two. Here, that's not the only miracle. It's not the biggest miracle. The biggest miracle is right around, you gotta go all, all the way to the end of the chapter, the, right around verse 43, where Peter starts preaching and because of what they had encountered, because they had already heard the message in their language, not in my language. I'm not right. trying to get you to understand the gospel the way I understood it. Right. I've got to communicate the message of the gospel in your native language. If you came up in the hood, I, you know, you, you don't know the hymns of the church. So right. when you walk in my church, you're going to hear something that you heard on the radio. When you walk in my church, because here two words, I want you to write this down. It's got to be relatable and it's got to be palatable. Hmm. It, the, the, see, we just keep doing what we've always done and we love it because it's what we grew up in. Right. We, I mean, we love it. But there are people whose grandmama didn't bring them to church. Yeah. There are people whose mother never came to church and their friend brought them. What are you doing that when they walk in your church, they hear something that they can relate to? that makes them feel safe, that makes them feel included. So we have a time, I, I stole this from Bishop, uh, a time called Pass the Peace. Y'all yeah. still do Pass the yeah, Peace? We still do it. Every Sunday, Pass the Peace. But we're not singing, just wanna thank you for Pass the Peace. <laughs> we, we're not singing, you reign for Pass the Peace. <laughs> it might be Frankie Beverly. It might be, it's it's something that, that disarms the non-believer. Because sound, uh, it either, watch this, Corinthians says, if the, what, if the, I think it's 12 and 7 or something like that, if what is being harped or piped doesn't give a distinction in the sound, who will know whether to charge or to retreat? And we get up and say, y'all want to have church today? No, right. it's because what, what you're communicating is not palatable. Wow. I can't relate to it. So I don't know what to do. I just stand there. Not that I don't want to be here. I just, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I can't relate. And so. And that relatability, Bishop, I think, missed on your critics, detractors, yes. and bloggers. Yes. Is one thing I've been waiting three weeks for somebody to pick up. Wow. And nobody has brought it up. And I wanted to bring it up today. Is the significance that you were doing it in that pulpit with your son. And I think everybody, no, missed. Uh, nobody, and everybody missed what that meant for a generation. You just turned 50. Your son is how old? 23. 23. Just turned 23? Yes. September. So to see two generations embroiled, I think, was the picture everybody missed. And watch this. Yeah. I didn't invite him on stage. No way. I didn't ask him to come on stage. It wasn't planned. It was, it was a spontaneous moment. As I was closing a minute, now, now yeah. the average preacher going to close with, say yes, yeah, and, right. and with, with right. my kids, my kids, my new key is F. It used to be a flat. My, <laughs> I'm getting old, I had to lower my key. My key is F. Yeah, sick. And, but we close with walk it out. And a hundred, well, it was two services, so, you know, people even said that. I counted the people. It wasn't no hundred right. people. Well, that's because you only saw the 10 o'clock service. Talk to, to me about how <laughs> it is getting your children involved, Bishop, when 83% of adult preachers' kids don't go to church. 83%. 83. Yes, that they resent the church. I just, I just, I just said it to you. It, yes. It's because the, the ministry is while it, um, I, I want to say this in a way that doesn't offend, uh, but everything must change. 
every everything has to evolve. Like like I, I was uh, talking the other night. Somebody said, well, it was good enough for me. It, it should be good enough for them. Well, you also used to use a rotary dial phone. And it worked. And people, you were able to have conversations. But now you have a computer that also serves as a phone yeah. in your hand that right. you will miss a flight for <laughs> right. if you leave it. Because it, so everything has to evolve. And uh, what I, all I'm saying is uh, because we are who we are, when I put my hands on it, I sanctify it. Wow. But that, that my, my, my relationship with God is not so shallow or thin that when I touch a thing that is considered secular or non-religious to somebody else, yes. the moment that I put my hands to it, it redeems. Yeah. And now it becomes useful uh, for the kingdom of God. And we saw that. So, you know, if, if nobody would have got saved that night, if nobody would have come to the altar, if nobody would have got filled with the Holy Ghost that night, that's the other thing they ain't talking about. People, right. li people <laughs> literally, children, are being baptized in the spirit in our church, like literally children, like the, the revelation that God has given to me to, to walk them through that, to explain, ain't no tarrying. We bring them to the altar, two, three minutes, bam, they got it. They're speaking in an unknown tongue. They have a prayer language now. This, this, this ain't no, yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's the point that the, the way that we communicate it, that my, my children are in church because I didn't make them or I didn't communicate the message of the gospel in my language. I communicated it in their language. My daughter is a worship and arts major at Lipscomb University in Nashville. Yeah. I didn't try to turn her into Tasha Cobbs. Wow. Because he, 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 <laughs> right, right. that's not who Kayla Murphy is. Yeah. Kayla Murphy is a, she, her, her flow is different. Right. So as I'm communicating the message of the gospel to Kayla, I'm not using praise is what I do to do that. I'm using some other songs and artists and Tasha is Tasha, but Kayla's going to be Kayla. The way I communicated with Tasha is not the way that I have to communicate with Kayla or David. Yeah. For that fact of the matter. Yeah. But bravery Bishop is.